Monster Hunter World is an amazing game. The huge and beautiful maps and the myriad of plants and endemic life that inhabits them, to either your benefit or possible detriment, I might add, are combined with fun and complex crafting and combat systems that we can experience I'm glad to sink hundreds of hours into. But of course, what's a Monster Hunter game without the monsters? That's right, in this series I'm going to show you every last beast from the smallest pest to the biggest and scariest of the dragons. Their strengths, weaknesses, and the best ways to handle each and every one of these creatures. As well as the uh, weapons and hats you can make from stealing their skin and bones. Welcome to the Monster Hunter World Boss Encyclopedia. Hello! Today we'll be going over all the Fanged Wyverns. That means Great Jagras, Tobigodachi, Great Giros, Odagaron, and Dogma. If you haven't seen any of these and don't want to spoil the surprise, there are timestamps in the description for you to jump to. Okay, so the Great Jagras, aka the Punching Bag of Monsters, is a great place to start. He's the first thing you fight that takes more than five solid hits without dying. He lives in the ancient forest, and he is weak to the fire element, takes normal damage from thunder and ice, and is immune to the water element. He is also very susceptible to every type of status ailment, so anything with a status effect will work well. So knock him out, get that big hit on his breakable little forearms, chest, or head. Here's his low rank drops, and his high rank drops, just in case you were wondering. Anyway. Let's go find one of these guys and poke him with a stick or something. I assume that's how you do research. So he starts out in Area 2 and moves over to Area 1 looking for a snack. If he can't find anything there, he comes over here to Area 4 to make this whole Kestodon disappear right before your eyes. AMAZING! After that magic trick, he returns to his nest in Area 2 to feed the lesser Jagrasses. Note that at any time the Great Jagras can use this roar to summon a bunch of baby Jagrasses to make the fight a little bit tougher. They're basically cannon fodder, but you can get easily overwhelmed because there are so many of them. So his moveset is made up of a side roll, a ranged spitting attack, a straightforward charge, followed with a roll at the end, and a tail swipe. His attacks are similar, but less sporadic and damaging when he has an eaten. If you're having trouble fighting this guy, try some tinged, drugged, or poisoned meat to start the fight. And remember, he really doesn't like status effects, so weapons with poison or paralyze will work wonders. If you start to get overwhelmed with lesser jagrasses, take a step back, deal with a couple of them, and remember that stun damage like tackles and shield bashes to his head have a fewer chance of knocking him over. His nest in Area 2 also has a good number of options for jumping onto and mounting the beast to take it down as well. Once you have downed him, focus on attacking either his gut to knock food out of him, or his head slash chest area to break the heart. In some instances, you can instigate a turf war between the Great Jagras and your local neighborhood Anjanam, who will be more than willing to help you teach the Great Jagras important life lessons like don't invest money that you're not willing to lose, do what you love, love what you do, and finally, do not mess with a fire-breathing Tyrannosaurus Rex. Class is over. At the end of a long day, Great Jagras will head home to Area 10 for a nap and perhaps a light midnight snack. What are, what are you eating? So the high rate Great Jagras sets give you Speed Eating, Intimidator, Palico Rally, Fortify, Speed Crawler, and Free Meal. But Speed Eater is a good perk all around, almost halving the time to drink potions of their healing items at level 2. The Intimidator perk can be useful for setting up traps and ambushes because at level 3, most monsters will aggro you. The B set gives you a level 1 decoration of each of the armor pieces and reduces the speed eating and intimidator perks level 1. There are 6 weapons of the Great Jagger's Tree, the Sword and Shield, Heavy and Light Bow Guns, Gun Lance, Switch Axe, and Charge Blade. You can also make the speed eating charm with Great Jagger's parts. But we all love him. We have to. I mean, look at that smile. Yeah. Okay, next we got the Tova Girachi. It lives in the ancient forest. It is weak to water. Takes normal damage from ice and fire, he's resistant to dragon, and immune to thunder. 
It is weak to poison and normally affected by all other status ailments. Its head and tail are its weak points and are also breakable along with its legs and back. Not since crossbreed Priscilla have I wanted to pet something's tail so damn badly. It just looks so soft. Anyway, here are its low and high rank drops for funsies. Let's go get one! Go ride him. I can't. So until the first gets up in the morning, she becomes eternally pissed off and will start a fight with anything and everything in her way. Literally. She'll fight with Rathalos, Rathian, Pookie Pookie, Anjanath, Great Jagras, anything. Until she gets to her watering hole under that boulder in the middle of the map and takes her morning coffee. Too much coffee. Okay, so Toby can attack with a tail whip, a lunging bite attack, which can come from either side of you. She can charge her static. She can lunge at you with a jump, she can jump into the air, do a front flip, and then land on her tail, she can do a back flip, and then slam with her tail again, she can also run into the tree, fly at you, and do a 360 degree spin. This move is particularly dangerous and hard to dodge sometimes, but I find if you roll towards her, it seems to work out most of the time. Toby can also charge her body with static electricity, as you can tell when the white hair starts popping up on her body. This increases her chance of inflicting Thunder Blight and Paralysis. The static will wear off over time, or if you damage her enough. You can also use Puddle Pods to disperse the static electricity quicker. If you're having trouble fighting Toby, wait by the suspended boulder I mentioned earlier to start the fight, because this is gives her money drink. You can also have a good old Angie toss her around for a chunk of extra damage. I mean, Toby likes to aggro everything, but I think Anjanath is a little bit better at that. Now for the gear. The Toby Kodachi sets both have good thunder resistance and a weakness to water. The Toby A set comes with Constitution level 3, which reduces a fixed stamina depletion by 30%, Evade Extender level 3, which greatly extends evasion distance, Thunder Resistance level 3, which increases the thunder resistance by 20 and defense by 10, Thunder Attack level 2, which increases thunder attack by 60, and Jump Master, which negates knockback during jumps. So if you want thunder resistance and the ability to stay in the air for a long time, like with the Insect Glaive, this is your armor. The B set has the same skills, but all at level 1 in exchange for a level 2 decoration slot on the helm, mail, and bam braces, and two level 1 decoration slots on the coil and greaves. You can also make the Kadachi Pillar level 3 Insect Glaive, the Kadachi Lion level 3 Heavy Bow Gun, the Kadachi Fang 3 Longsword, which looks pretty freaking sick, the Kadachi Claws 3 Dual Blades, which are also pretty cool. The Kadachi Striker Gun Lance, which, once again, yes. The Kadachi Can 3 Charge Blade. And the Flying Kadachi Strike Bow. I didn't know it could fly. You can also make the Fitness, Shock, and Thunder Charms with Kadachi parts. Alright! Great Jiros. The one who put Fang in Fanged Wyvern. This one lives in the Rotten Vale. His head, front legs, and tail are its weak spots. This is the first one on the list of the severable tail, so chop it off and get that extra card. This one is weak to water, takes normal damage from ice and fire, is resistant to dragon, and immune to thunder. Sleep works well, poison blast and stun work normally, and it's resistant to paralysis. Here are his low and high rank rewards. Now then, I think it's omelette time. Gonna be tasty. Great Jiros can usually be found in Area 6, munching on some tasty floor bacon with his Jiros Groupies trademarked. After this nutritious meal, it will return to its home to discuss world domination with its lackeys, also crushing their dreams to assert further dominance. Heartbreaking. Its attacks include a spinning attack, a roar to summon more Jiros, a very fast forward charge, a shorter range forward charge, a sideways body slam, and a front flip body slam. The Great Jurist has some serious paralysis attack, making its feign so loop the effect. Use torch pods to clear the effluvia and scare the little Jiros into a corner where you can beat them in your own leisure later on. they will run back to its house in Area 8 to sleep off the bully. The armor! The Jiro set comes with thunder resistant water weakness. The A set comes with paralysis resistance level 3, which prevents paralysis. Paralysis attack level 3 for an extra 20% paralysis buildup and bonus 10% 
paralysis damage. Palico Rally Level 2 gives you an extra 10% Palico attack and defense. Horn Maestro, which extends melody effects duration and increases the health recovery with the Hunting Horn. And a Fluvial Expert for nullifying Aphidia and reducing damage from acids. B set has a cool red glow. The same perks as the A set, reduced to level 1, and a level 1 decoration slot for each piece of armor. You can also craft the Malady's Kiss 3 Greatsword, the Malady's Tabar 3 Sword and Shield, the Malady's Fist 3 Hammer, the Death Fang Gunlance 3, and the Gyros Ninja 3 Charge Blade. You can also make the Paralysis Charm, the Immobilized Charm, Hungerless Charm, Intimidator Charm, Performer's Charm, and the Parafunctionality Charms. Moving right along, we have the Odogaron. This edgier version of Clifford the Big Red Dog lives in the Coral Highlands and the Rotten Vale. It's weak to ice, takes normal damage from thunder, is resistant to fire and water, and is immune to the dragon element. Paralysis works very well, sleep, blast, and stun work normally, and poison doesn't do very well at all. Its head, tail, and front legs are tweak points, and all of its legs and head are breakable. Its tail can also be severed. Here are its low rank and high rank drops for those interested. Now I think I need to get out of here. I'm sorry, Senpai. I didn't see anything! I swear! Oh no! Oats likes to sleep on this super comfy bed in Area 4 of the Coral Highlands. Oh, he's so cute! You know what? You're coming home with me. That's final! And he also likes to sleep on bone piles in Area 13 of the Rotten Vale. Gotta catch them all! So, Odie has a lunging bite with very good range, which you can do from his front left or right. He can swipe you with either his left or right forearm. He can stand on his rear legs and pounce you. Do a standard tail whip. A long jump followed by a very fast tail whip. And a counter attack where he gets knocked away and then lunges you very quickly after roaring. Oreo moves a lot, so using the lock on to keep track of him is a good idea. If you're hit with an attack, you could get the bleed debuff, which will do a bit of health damage whenever you use the stamina consuming move. You can remove this effect by crouching for a while, equipping the immunity mantle, or using the cleanser booster. Very useful. You can also use the torch pods on the ground to keep the effluvia in the rotten veil away, which I always forget to do. Sometimes Odogaron has a hard time getting out of his poorly chosen bed in the morning, so help him out again. He's stuck in their gut! Okay. If you knock him down, the lesser Jiros bully him sometimes. That combined with his weakness to paralysis can be a good wombo combo. Now, despite his appearance, Mr. Odegoron isn't the best at making friends. He can fight with the paparazzi that bug him for beauty secrets. His political views differ from Mr. Radaban's, which causes some, uh, some pretty heated debates. Nice! Palumu makes fun of him for looking like an angry package of Twizzlers. Which it now regrets very much, I think. And in very rare circumstances, even Balhazak has to bring Odegoron down by a pick or two. In both the Coral Highlands and the Rotten Vale, Oregano uses these holes in the wall to get back to bed quickly. Now for the armor. Ortegaron armor has extra fire and water defense with a weakness to ice and thunder. The perk set for having two Ortegaron armor pieces is Punishing Draw, which adds a stun effect to the draw attack and slightly increases attack power. And for four pieces of armor, you get Protective Polish, which prevents weapon sharpness from decreasing for a set time after sharpening. It also has Critical Eye level 5 for 20% increased affinity, Bleed Resistance level 3 to prevent bleeding entirely, Speed Sharpening level 3, which removes three cycles from the sharpening process, Constitution level 1 for reduced fixed stamina depletion by 10%, and Quick Sheath level 1 for slightly faster weapon sheathing. So, the B set has the same perks with Bleed Resist, Speed Sharpening, and Critical Eye reduced to level 2, but it makes up for it by having level 2 decoration slots in the Helm and Coil, and level 1 decoration slots in the Mail, Van Braces, and Greaves. You can make the Garon Dara 2 Lance, the Vice Insect Glaive, the Sin Dual Blades, the Odium Charge Blade, and the Karma Light Bow Gun, along with the Bleed Masters and Whetstone Charms. 
On to our final fanged wyvern, the Dodogma. This guy rocks out in the Elder's Recess. It's weak to thunder, takes normal damage from ice and water, is resistant to dragon and immune to the fire element. Poison works really well, sleep, paralysis, and stun work normally, and blast is less effective than usual. Its head and tail are its weak points, the head and front legs can be broken, and the tail is severable for that extra carve. It's only in high rank, so here are the drops. Now then, where the hell am I? Now the Dodogma usually hangs out here in Area 8, but I can't seem to find it. Wait, what the? What the? Anyway, on to the attacks. This one has some standard moves like the side roll, the body slam, and the tail whip. You know, basic stuff that 90% of monsters are going to be able to do. However, this guy gets really dangerous after he's munched on some rocks. The Dodogma can enter a standard eating animation like this, but it also has a short and long range charge attack that can also fill its mouth with rocks. These charges have a high chance of inflicting blast bite, by the way. Once it is eaten, its jaw will glow red and it'll be able to use explosive magma attacks. There's a plate blade magma spin attack, a medium to long range explosive cannon, and a shotgun like explosive volley. That's terrifying. However, if you hit its jaw enough, you can cause the explosive to go off inside of its mouth for extra damage. You can also punish him for doing the slower eating animation by hitting him in the gut. You can also wait for him to just fire enough shots to need to recharge again, but that's ill-advised. Also roll off that blast light, it hurts. So as always, there are a plethora of environmental hazards for you to run the dogma into, like the ceiling crystals in Area 8, or this lava spout here in Area 7. Unfortunately, there's no turf wars this time, so it's just gonna have to fight lava. Now for the long part, gear. The Dodogma armor has fire and dragon resistance to the weakness to thunder. It has the perks blast resistance all three to prevent blast blight. Blast attack level three for 20% extra blast buildup and a bonus of plus 10. Bombardier level two for 20% more explosive power. Artillery level two for 20% extra damage for explosive attacks. And 30% reduction in cooldown for wyvern's fire and capacity boost for an extra gun lance shell or an extra charge blade file. Explosive attacks for artillery is like charge blade, overcharge, and whatnot. You get the idea. Shelling attacks, all that cool stuff. The B set has the same perks with all but the artillery perk reduced to level one. In exchange for those sweet, sweet level 1 decoration slots. Oh yeah. You can also make the Gamma Pile Bunker 2 Lance, the Gamma Cane 2 Insect Grave, the Gamma Cannon 2 Heavy Bow Gun, the Gamma Horn 2 Hunting Horn, and the Gamma Silt 2 Charge Blade, along with the Blast, Demolition, and Bombardier Charms. Well, that's everything I know about the family of Fanged Wyverns. Thanks for watching, and if I missed something, make sure to let me know in the comments below. I assume that's what they're there for. Well, that and hurting my feelings. Now for some real role-playing action. Check this out. There goes my debt. There goes my tiny old rhino statue that broke yesterday. There goes the pal I lost in the woods. There I go asking you to like, comment, and subscribe. And there goes my integrity. Next time, it's fish and bird giants. No, really.